Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at heat flow and the concept of thermal equilibrium. So stay tuned. You've probably learned that heat flows from a hot region to a cold region. But that's actually not entirely true. That's only the half of it. So let's see what's actually going on. When two objects are in thermal contact, thermal contact means that heat can flow between the two objects. This is not to be confused with physical contact and we cannot just imagine solids and solids. It can be solids and solids, solids and liquids, solids and gas, any phase with any phase. It can be me and the air around me. I am in thermal contact with the air surrounding me because heat energy can flow from me to the air and from the air into me. So this is what thermal contact is. When two objects are in thermal contact, let's look at this example. Here we have object A with a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and we have object B with a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. So heat energy is able to flow between them. Now we automatically expect heat to flow from A to B because A is at a higher temperature than B. And this is true. So heat flows from A to B. These numbers here are completely random, they are arbitrary. This is just to help you understand. So let's say heat flows from A to B at a rate of 10 joules per second. Every second, A is transferring 10 joules of heat to B. But heat also flows from B to A. This is the part that we most of the time overlook. B transfers heat to A at a lower rate because it is at a lower temperature. It does give heat to A. It does supply heat energy to A, but at a lower rate. So let's take that rate at 6 joules per second. So here always remember heat will always flow two ways. From the hot object to the cold object and the cold object to the hot object. However, they will be at different rates as we can see here. From the hot object to cold object, the rate will be higher than the heat transfer rate from the cold object to the hot object. Imagine this scenario. This hand. This is my right hand. My right hand has five pens. My left hand has two pens. So let's say my right hand gives my left hand three pens. So three is given here. And my left hand gives my right hand two pens. So here, four. So you can see both are giving each other pens. My right hand gave my left hand three pens, the left hand gave the right hand two pens. But ultimately, we started with five and two. Now you can see ultimately what happened is, it looks like overall, my right hand has lost one pen because we started like this and we ended like this. We started with five and two and we ended with four and three. So although both of my hands gave pens to each other, Eventually, overall, the big picture is that my right hand gave one pen to my left pen. Now, this is the concept of heat flow here and net flow of heat. So, let's look at net flow of heat. A to B, 10 joules per second. B to A, 6 joules per second. So, there will be a net flow of heat of 4 joules per second from A to B. So from the hotter object to the colder object, there will be a net flow of heat. And this is why we normally say heat flows from a hot region to a colder region or hot object to a colder object. Because of this, it is actually the net flow of heat. So working towards thermal equilibrium, this is the same scenario as just now. So initially, it is 100 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. But there is a net flow of heat now going from A to B. So naturally, temperature A will start to drop and temperature B will start to rise because there is a net flow of heat going from A to B. B is gaining more and more heat energy. So let's say this is the first instance. The second instance, the temperature of A has dropped to 95. The temperature of B has risen to 75. Now, this is another assumption that is normally made that is wrong. The temperatures do not drop and increase at the same rate. This is dependent on the specific heat capacity of the object, which I will cover in the video, in the link in the corner. 
but the drop and increase in temperature does not happen at the same rate and so the final temperature of the two objects will not be the midpoint of the two initial temperatures this is a common misconception okay so here this in this example i purposely made it different so from 100 it's dropped to 95 that is a drop of 5 degrees celsius then from 60 it has gone up to 75 that's an increase in 15 degrees celsius okay so it is not the same then at the second instance now b has actually has more heat energy compared to earlier compared to the first instance so the rate of heat flow will also drop so now just now was 10 joules per second now let's say it's dropped to 9 joules per second and for the heat flow from b to a will increase because now b has more heat so it goes to 7 so from 10 it has become 9 from 6 it has become 7 in the second instance so this you can see the gap is becoming smaller and smaller now the net flow of heat is also smaller the net flow of heat is only 2 joules per second 9 minus 7 the net flow is still from a to b but at a lower rate and then we go to the third instance for the third instance the temperature of a has dropped to 90 the temperature of b has increased to 90 as well now when the temperatures are equal the rate of flow of heat from a to b and from b to a is the same they become equal and when it is equal there is no net flow of heat there is no excess go back to the pen example let's say i have four pens and four pens i give my right hand one pen and then i give back my left hand one pen so in the end it looks like no pen has been transferred between hands but in actual fact it has one pen has gone to the left one pen has gone back to the right but overall we see like as if nothing has happened this is the concept of thermal equilibrium when the temperatures are the same and there is no net flow of heat this is the keyword here no net flow of heat now this is not to be mistaken that the two objects have the same heat energy the two objects do not necessarily contain the same heat energy at this point this again depends on the heat capacity of the object which we will cover later but for now the key point here is thermal equilibrium is reached when they have equal temperatures not equal heat energy let's look at how this concept is used when objects are being heated up so let's say this is this is a cake batter that's put in an oven so the cake batter's temperature is 37 degrees celsius the temperature in the oven is kept constant at 180 degrees celsius by a thermostat so this is also the temperature of the air in the oven now the batter is actually in thermal contact with the air in the oven so heat can flow between the air and the batter initially the temperature of the air is much higher than the batter so what is going to happen is that heat is going to flow from the air to the batter at a high rate but don't forget heat will also flow from the batter to the air but at a much lower rate because the temperature is much lower so there is a flow of heat both ways from air to batter and batter to air however since the rate of flow of heat from air to batter is much higher than from batter to air what happens is there is a net flow of heat so there is a net flow of heat from the air to the batter so the temperature of this batter will continue to rise until the cake is cooked thermal equilibrium is not necessarily reached and it's not necessarily desired in the case of the cake if the cake reaches 180 degrees celsius we will have burnt cake so we take out the cake from the oven before it has reached thermal equilibrium the temperature of the oven and the fridge are controlled by thermostat so initially when heat there's a net heat flow from the air and the oven into the cake the temperature of the air will drop however the oven will detect the drop in temperature and try to increase the temperature back to 180 so here it's a little bit different because here thermal equilibrium is not rich there is a, always a net heat of flow from the air to the cake and the cake is taken out before thermal equilibrium is reached what about cooling down objects so now let's say the cake is ready and we put the cake in the fridge so when we put the cake in the fridge the temperature in the fridge is about 2 to 8 degrees celsius let's say here is 8 degrees celsius now let's say the cake we start back with 37 degrees celsius 
So now what is going to happen is the cake is in thermal contact with the air in the fridge and the air in the fridge has a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius the cake has a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius what's going to happen is the cake is going to release heat it's going to transfer a lot of heat to the air in the fridge so this is going to happen at a higher rate compared to the heat transfer between the air in the fridge into the cake so always remember it happens both ways However, one rate will be higher than the other depending on the temperature. So since the temperature of the cake is higher than the air in the fridge, it's going to have a higher transfer of heat from the cake to the air. And this will create a net flow of heat from the cake to the air. And this will cause the temperature of the cake to drop. Uh, in the fridge, it is more likely to achieve thermal equilibrium. So this might happen until the cake finally reaches 8 degrees Celsius. Again, the fridge is also the temperature in the fridge is also regulated. Initially, when he, there is a net flow of heat, the temperature of the air in the fridge will increase. But the fridge will detect this change in temperature and it will bring down the temperature back to 8 degrees Celsius. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do support me by hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll be posting at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.